And yes, here we are. Welcome. Uh, Espresso session episode one, two, three with uh, Cassie Levi. Welcome, Cassie. Thank you so much, Nino. It's great to be here. Uh, welcome. Great to have you. We're going to talk about uh, Tides Rising, your uh, debu de debut album, eight song. We just listened to the single, Let It Burn. Let me put some background music here. It's pretty dry. All right. Okay. Yeah. Welcome. Espresso Sesh, Best Frequencies Forever. Cassie Levi, a singer songwriter, like big voice, tiny instrument. That's your. Uh, That's what I like to say. There's a like say, <laughs> uh, closer, closer. Let's let's listen to the big voice All right. with, the, with the mic closer. Yes. Cool. So we're gonna present here um, uh, Ties Rising, eight song just released fresh release like couple, like a month ago or something like that no it was officially released um in february Fair. so i think uh when i first contacted you it was it was pretty fresh and now it's been okay. a couple of months but it's still it's, it's my first baby it's still fresh you know like a couple of months you know it's still um still uh ba baby steps no baby steps it's barely holding its head up so eight songs that uh, they represent uh, like um, a little a portion of uh, like your songwriting no mm -hmm. um how you get inspired um, like to you know put yourself out there and uh, like learn an instrument sing your song mm -hmm. um i first got inspired to start doing music uh when i was in high school i started doing musical theater actually which is why it was so funny when you were mentioning cassie levi with an eye from broadway she okay. really is living my dream life um, <laughs> so i auditioned for a school musical and i started singing and um that was the first time i realized that like i think i really like doing music and i really like performing and being in front of people so um i started playing my mom's guitar and uh my my hands were just way too small to fit on the the fretboard so um, my first year of college, I got a ukulele and sort of started playing, playing that back then and started to write songs as well. Um, they were really terrible for a good couple years, but now I think they're, they're starting to come along. Okay. I mean, you know, like, um, you need some time to, to you know, yes. to, to master like a craft. No? So, you know, you, yes. you cannot <laughs> pretend like pick up, pick up an instrument and, ju and just play. It's a matter of like, you know repetition like practice and yes and stuff like, but you know the, the 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 thing that moves you like the, the, like your expression the need to express yourself no yes um i mean creativity has kind of always been really important to me um it's one of those things where i don't really know i don't really know where it came from i think some people sometimes you're just born with it so um ever since i was a little kid i loved to draw and I think that was where it got started. I just loved like creating things, which is why songwriting in so particular, I'm really drawn to. I don't know if I'm like the most skilled musician, but the idea of like creating music is just really exciting to me. Just the idea of creation in general has always been like a big just need. So you, you come from uh, nor, uh, like the central North California by the, uh, the Sierra Nevada, no? And you, yes. you moved to San Francisco to, st to study art school. Yes. So, you know, also like, like uh, you know, drawing, like... Yes, drawing. And um, I majored in painting. Um, and so I did the art for my CD cover okay. myself. Um, so that was, that was what got me to move down here in the first place, was just that need for like a... A creative environment that would harbor that um, my hometown it's got a lot of like farmers and cows which is cool but cows will only take you so far yeah i mean it's uh, the city living a little bit and now you live in the um, alpine bay you know so yes. you're close to the coast yes and i mean the coast is so beautiful and that's been a big inspiration i think that's there's a uh, lot e of like ocean even metaphors. The, even the name of the yes. of the album no? Yes, tides, tides rising. It's spent a lot of time writing songs just sitting by the ocean, like letting it waft over you. Yeah, there is a, like the song we just played, Let It Burn. Mm -hmm. uh, you released a video that yeah. is actually, it's very like, you know, it's by the ocean, by the coastline, 
by a pier, no, it's nice, like, uh, location, like, down the pier. Like yes, the, that's all down, uh, recorded in Half Moon Bay, in, okay. like, a few different areas down there. Yeah, from the Redwoods to the, to the ocean, no, like... Yes, yeah, we did a lot of, um, like, visual playing with, like, the, the trees that were in the cypress forest, and then, like, the poles on the pier, and, um, the dancer that we had, uh, her name is Suzanne, she, like navigating through those spaces it was a really that was a really fun process i'm really proud of the way that the video turned out cool no it's very it's very nice very very good invite you to to check it out uh, let it burn yeah um we're gonna talk about the music that you recorded mm -hmm. uh but also you're gonna play, perform some music no yes you ready to like sing a song right now like right away sure or, we can, we can yeah. whatever whatever works yeah, we can yeah. bust one out yes what are, what are you gonna sing um i was thinking that i would start with uh we were just talking about the title of the sea tides rising that line is taken from uh the last song on the album which is called the space the space and it's also the oldest song on the album okay cassie levi bff.fm Hey you 
Silivine, uh, The Space. So this is, you say, the oldest song that means the one of the first you composed, no? Uh, you um, one of the first. It's the oldest song on, on this album, for sure. Okay. And uh, we, yeah, I, can, I can see the inspiration from the coast, from the ocean. Yes. Um, I wrote that song when I first moved down to Half Moon Bay, which was about four years ago. Um, and so it was a lot about, like, you know, leaving my old life and like starting something new um, and kind of like embracing like loneliness in a new place and like using it as like an opportunity to grow. Yeah, because like you said, um, sometimes uh, like uh, uh, loneliness or like uh, solitude or like like can be um, a, a good moment to uh, to over overcome this like writing stuff you no know? like writing songs like be creative because you know like it's a moment and especially like when you move to a new place i mean remember when i first moved here you no know, it's there is this sense of wonder like there is the the, the unknown but also and there's so many possibility but also there's kind of like a fear you no know? like what is this like it's like it's big and um, Yes, it's like a very, um, a very interesting combination of emotions, I think. Um, it's, it's a really beautiful time because you have the opportunity to just figure things out and decide who you want to be uh, totally independent of everything you've known before. But it can feel very freeing and like, a, like a little lost at the same time. But you know, in the, um, in the case of a <coughs> songwriter, you know, it's a good moment to, you know, to sit down and, and write, no? Exactly. Yeah. So, um, uh, we talk about, like, how you start, like, singing, no? And mm -hmm. uh, so, recital theater at school. And then you start playing uh, ukulele because your, your, um, your hands finger, so your small. hands are so small for a guitar, no, for the fretboard. But how you start writing songs? Um, I think that kind of came just with the territory of playing, playing instruments. I think I started doing that around the same time I started playing guitar. I think I learned like a couple Beatles covers, but after that, I kind of just went right into like trying to write my own music. You know, material, yes. Yeah, I think um, I was really into. Um, this is like an embarrassing fact about me, but I used to make a lot of like youtube vlogs on the internet and i was listening to a lot of like really small um kind of singer songwriters who were just like them and their video camera and their guitar and making stuff and that was like really inspirational to me it was like oh these people like they're just they're just doing whatever they want they're just grabbing their car they're grabbing yeah. their guitar and they're writing some songs they're just putting it up on the internet i think that's really cool so i kind of started doing that a little bit too and still still doing it now minus mostly the youtube yeah but also i mean uh you also like the song that you start doing like that like for a, like like play let's say like play like try no like let's do it like then became more like structure you like this song they became songs so with arrangement other musician involved mm -hmm. like in the case of the like the recording no mm -hmm. Yeah, there are other musicians that are like playing instruments with you. Let's talk about this, you no? Know, like when the songs became like when the 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 hobby became more you know, like the trying to emulate people that were doing their the music on YouTube became like songs, you no, know, with structure and mm -hmm. So you test you tested your songs on the road like a concert and sh and uh, concert like a, a gathering and stuff like that mm -hmm. and uh, you know like then the songs became like structured with how, 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 how it went i started pretty small with like an open mic at uh, my college 
Um, and then I guess I started doing, um, I did I'll do a lot more like theater performances, which led me into wanting to perform more. So once I started playing more music, I just started playing out more mostly at like open mics. There was one near my house that I went to a lot. And um, after doing that for like several years, you just kind of like get in the habit of performing. And then I started to meet like a few other people in the industry. So like I um, got to know like a bartender who ran a, another bar who um, got me signed up to like play some shows there and that started developing. And then I started meeting um, some other musicians. Um, so like, I think, I think a lot of those people were like really instrumental in rolling as well. So like one, the open mic that I was talking about, I met these musicians there um, that are in a band called Bear Coon. I brought their CD with me as well, um, who became like good friends of mine. And they were like touring all the time and doing music all the time. And they were really um, inspirational to me um, me actually getting out and like making this album in the first place and so they started playing music with me whenever they would come through on tour we would make like a little impromptu band where they would do like some guitar and drums and they actually recorded on the cd with me as well which ended up being like a beautiful um a beautiful connection so i think a lot of um the actual song arrangement there was some of it that was like in my head and then there was some of it that we sort of worked out inside of the studio that kind of like magic that happens there was some that we had already put together just from playing shows um so a lot of things kind of fell together in different ways to like bring bring the album out and make it a full fleshed thing that's sitting on a table now yeah and it's uh, the disc is inside the player yeah and um um so also like I was, this record came after uh, like a campaign on Indi indiegogo so you yes. were like really like uh you really wanted it no? i did so <laughs> you i mean i was reading on the internet you were saving some money also you started the campaign mm -hmm. yeah because you know it's um, it's expensive like to make a record and to, pr to press it but also you know it's a lot of work like in order to you know to write the music to arrange it to record it to press it you know yes so it, it's been a long process no it's a inc it's an incredibly long process and i feel like i tried i tried really hard to streamline everything but there's only so much so much that you can really do i think um if you don't count the, pr the period of time where I was writing songs, it probably took about a year from where I decided like, I'm going to do this to where it was like completely realized. Um, besides the songwriting process. I mean, my, my friends had really talked me into it. Like you need to make this. And I agreed with them. It was something I'd wanted for a long time, but finances were always a deterrent. Um, Cause even if you're looking at recording a bare bones album, which I think this ended up being, it still is, is so expensive. So I was just kind of saving all my extra pennies for months and months and months. And um, the Indiegogo campaign ended up being very successful. I also did um, a fundraiser um, in my in my town, Half Moon Bay, where I got all my most talented musical friends and we just played music for like six hours. And um, I think we ended up making, between that and the Indiegogo, like twelve to $1,500 which was hugely, hugely helpful in making the album. In the album. But, you know, I, I guess you're going to be happy about the album, no? Because it's like, a, I mean, besides having your song, it's also your design, like on the cover. And uh, so it's like a nice, uh, uh, are you proud of it, no? I'm incredibly, incredibly proud of proud it. Incredibly proud of it, okay. <laughs> and you are going uh, around, uh, you're playing these days and you uh, perform this album and presenting it no they have a couple of gigs coming out yes to, like tomorrow probably um oh, yeah, I, a couple of days in uh, san jose yes i'm i'm playing at a farmer's market tomorrow which is something uh, this is my last week at my main day job i'm like leaving it to try and pursue art and music so okay. fingers crossed that that works so i've started oh. doing like a uh, farmer's market in half moon bay in pacifica once each a month so i've got one of those tomorrow and then um, on this this weekend, we have two gigs. I'm playing with a band these days. Um, so we are playing at Tiny Fest, which is in San Jose at the fairgrounds um, from 
6 to 7.30 is our time slot. And then the next day, we're going to be playing at San Mateo Pride in Central Park from 12.30 to, I think, like 1.10 or 1.15. Okay. And other, and other, day, and other dates are coming next fo yes. following yes yes i should have a i should have an upcoming gig in july hopefully we're mm. trying to get it on the books with my friend spare coon um they kind of like they kind of like come as they go but i post all of them or the majority of them on my website i feel like a little that uh, section bands in town app or widget or widget. whatever those things okay. are called <laughs> yeah you just you just plug all your info in and then it brings up the shows yeah, you know, this is like make me like another question huh, in my mind. So it's a lot of work besides uh, like, I mean, we talk about like producing them also, you know, keep it together, you know, like and uh, like um, find gigs and uh, and play the gigs. I mean, play the gigs is the less work because, you know, also there is like a like you know, the pleasure in performance. No? Yeah, like that's the fun part. That's the fun part. I mean, you, you play music to, to perform. No, it's the like the adrenaline you have on stage the feedback with with the crowd no it's something that is like priceless no but you know in order to get there like you have to find the gigs and uh, and push kind of push yourself like you know push your music and your album yeah self promotion go, and like go marketing to the go to the radio shows and uh, talk yeah. about <laughs> it you know all these things but you know it's a uh, it's a good it's a um, it's a very like noble like doing that and uh, you know like you gotta you gotta do it yeah it's yeah. one hundred percent necessary but I think for a lot of musicians that's the most difficult part because um, it's like you love your music and you want to talk about it all the time but self promotion feels really weird yeah. um, and then marketing is just like it's just really boring you know you have to be like oh i gotta make a website and have to upkeep it and have to put all this information in there and i have to figure out like invoices and 1099s and <laughs> all this yeah but you know like it's um, i mean self-promotion can be annoying when it's like a, uh like a shameless plug you know let's say like oh i'm the best uh, songwriter in the world or, like i got the best music uh, out there no you know not that kind of stuff like self-promotion a little bit they say like hey i'm I did this, you know, like, you want to check it out, you know, like, without, without being, like, invasive or, like, you know, like... Yeah, finding that balance between, like, way too much and, and not way, enough. Not enough. And it's not easy to yeah. find that balance, <laughs> yeah. But, you know, like, the what the what the, the, the thing that matters is the music. So, you know, if, the, the, if there is a good music, is the, the thing that matters. And sometimes, you know, like, first, like, music has no expiration date. So probably mm -hmm. something that you record now. We have an example, probably famous example, like Rodriguez, the story of uh, Sugar Man, The Search of Sugar Man. This guy that recorded like two albums in the 70s. Nobody, like, nobody listened to him. He, like, he gave up. He went back to construction work. And the meanwhile, in South Africa, there was a legend about him. He was like uh, f as famous as uh, Elvis. And uh, and then like a journalist from South Africa went searching for him, and then he found found him in Detroit, his hometown, where he was living in his house, and he had no idea that in South Africa he was a rock star. So he brought you should you should watch this uh, this movie, Searching for Sugar Man. It it's like a beautiful story. It's a, it's a great story because you know like you never like you like abandon even like your craft, your passion, and then like you never know because music moved by itself. So you put it out there, and uh, I mean, you it, wait, not not wait, but you know, like even if you don't do anything, like if you never know, no. That's true, and with the internet these days, once it's out there, you know, when it's, it's, out, it's there, out there forever. It's out there forever. I mean, in the in these days, and the internet, it's like overload of information, <laughs> overload of music, and so it's it's like dropping, it's a drop in the ocean, no? Like yes. one song, one one artist so much even if you do it professionally trying to keep up it's it's very difficult but you know like you put it there and um, and see what's up what's up no you want to sing another song <laughs> I'm, I'm talking sure. too much <laughs> <laughs> what, what are you gonna sing um let's see i i will sing a slow jam called the art of forgetting the art of forgetting yeah the art the art of forgetting i wrote this song um after 
having a glass of wine and looking at my ex's Facebook profile, which you should never do, never do it, <laughs> and finding out that they were married. So this is where that came from. All right. <laughs> they are forgetting. Cassie Levi, BFF to the FM.
פודקאסט ליוואי, לייב, BFF, דוד FM, The Art of Forgetting. Yeah, life, you know, like, give you, everyday life give you inspiration, and you reprocess it, and you can write songs with it, no? Yes. Yeah. And uh, what doesn't kill you make you stronger, you know, even <laughs> something like, oh my, yes, you know, still, uh, you know, yeah, stronger than that. You want to do another one right, uh, right away? Sure. Um, let's flip the switch and do something that's a little bit more upbeat. I need to get my... I have this the kazoo. kazoo. Yeah. So in my actual album, um, there's a trumpet player. Okay. So I have yeah, to take off my headphones yeah, take, real quick. But, yes. Um, in my actual album, there's a trumpet player, but he doesn't follow me everywhere, unfortunately. Okay. So when he's not around, I just... Play his parts on the kazoo. On the kazoo, yeah. And uh, you made the uh, the older or or is it? Yeah. It's uh, it's it, got a little hands-free device, but yeah. it's seen better days. Cool, yeah. It's, it it does the job, no? It does the job. It yeah. The job done. And also, we gotta say that this this show is live from two to four p.m. like on a Tuesday, you no? Know? So many people they work at this time, you no? Know? So you know, it's not easy for like a musician to go to come over like. So even I, even I also, uh, I mean, we we contacted each other in February, you know, and then mm-hmm. in uh, June, we are in June now, so we are doing the show in June, so, you know, things, it's time. Anyway, you're going to do the part, the trumpet part with the kazoo. I do the trumpet part with the kazoo. This is just another song about all the dumb things that I do for love, so what a lot of my songs are about. So all right. The song is called Better By You. Better By You. It's the second song on the album. Yes. Yes. Cassie Levi, PFF.FM.
Cassie Levine, Better By You, on the ukulele, a tiny, tiny instrument, big voice. Tiny yeah. instrument, big voice. That's, where the, that's yes. where the saying comes from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can, I can, I can see. I can see. Yeah. Uh, I see also, like, in your music, like, there is this, um, like, a swingy, like, uh, uh, on the upbeat, you know, and blues, like, a folk Americana, no? There is, like, um, uh, do you listen a lot of music? Um, I... I feel like surprisingly, I, I, I may listen to music, but I feel like maybe not as much as your average musician would. I feel like people are constantly telling me like, oh, have you heard this person? And I usually haven't, but I think um, I have a weird, like a eclectic mix of things, probably also just from like doing musical theater, because I feel like they tend to take like a lot of different things for a lot of different shows. And it like brings together a lot of different types of styles i do enjoy some uh some bluesy jazzy tunes from time to time though you know i mean i this is what i can uh, like i can hear in your in your music no but you know the fact that uh, uh probably don't listening to much music for a songwriter is not a bad thing because oh. you know if you list i mean like i was telling you before like since i started doing radio mm -hmm. it's like s listening like all the time like you don't make music because you listen to music you know mm -hmm. if you want to make music probably you should listen less music even though it's always good to know what's going on around you i mean this is like a another theory you know i think that's some interesting advice you know but yeah i kind of like it you know yeah it, i mean uh yeah i mean <laughs> 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 this is what i what i feel no like when i when i listen a lot like i don't make music when I don't listen much, but also depends on uh, like different things, like uh, the environment you are, mm -hmm. and um, probably like living in a small town, it's uh, more uh, you have more time to s to be by yourself. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, like you said, you are about to quit your day job, no, to yes. pursue your music career, no, and then it, then it's gonna be a risk, but al also at the same time give you more time to to create, no? Exactly, and that's that's really what I'm looking for in doing that. Like I know we were talking earlier about like getting heard and um, like in terms of marketing and promotion, you never know when someone's gonna like know your stuff, and it's like that's all that's all good and dandy. But I feel like for me, a big part of like wanting to jump into the rat race and wanting to like make a career out of it is less about like wanting to be known or even heard, and more about just like being able to support myself by doing the things that I love and to be able to like have the time for those things. Because when you're working all the time, you know, you're working like 40 hours or whatever, and then you come home from work and you're like trying to work more to do like your music or your art. Like it just, um, it cuts into that. And I feel like you can't really like fully devote yourself to it. And so you can fully devote yourself to it. So it's like, it's unfortunate that you have to like get a lot of people to listen and care to like make that a reality. But just all is coming from a place of like wanting to have the time to do the thing that makes life exciting and great. Yeah, also it's a matter of uh, like determination. You gotta be determined mm -hmm. to do that and uh, find motivation also, no? because you know there is, you, you are your own boss. So you gotta give yourself like you know the time, then you know like task to do and complete that you know that kind of mentality no yes yeah you have to be very self-motivated and i think um i think i've done an okay job of it so far but i guess we'll see how i how i do i mean probably you're gonna do even better because you have less thing to to think about no like like day job and stuff like that that's true i'm excited to just like focus in and For, hone and also you know you gotta it's like you have to make your own income now. now. So, yeah. you know, it's like you have like more than motivation and kind of like a need. You have the real do, fire, the fire underneath. Because uh, yeah, if so you want to eat, you got to play those gigs. Yeah, you know, so you got to play, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you got you to go out and do it. You got to get it. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, it's exciting. And uh, I think like what like you, uh, what brought you to make the CD like physically may like one year like of work like to do that besides the songwriting process that is going to be also a long time so mm -hmm. you know it's another step of them and and you know it's uh it's cool because 
I see your excitement, no? And uh, you are you are young, no? So it's this is like uh, it's like you are uh, in uh, like you know in a, in a, um, you are like doing the first steps in a new world, like in a new world, no? In a, and doing what you love. So yes, there's lots of ample opportunities for that to go places. Because I'm hopefully not dying anytime soon. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully not. We never, we never <laughs> Just, know. Let's this, all knock on wood, please. Yeah, yeah. And also, you know, this is like the beginning of, uh, uh, you know, what took you like a long time to produce, like for this album. Mm -hmm. Now, like for the next one, it's going to be like, uh, probably the process is going to be quicker because... Uh, you know what to you know expect. What to, yeah, you know what to expect. And also, you know, like, uh, and probably like along the way, you're going to find your own uh, like, uh, like signature sound. And I mean, you already have one, no? but you're going to refine it and uh, it's going to yes. be, you know. And it's a nice, it's a exciting, uh, you know, it's an exciting thing, but that requires like a lot of work, no? Yes, it's yeah. a it's a real grind. I think there's a lot of people that think musicians just like hang around, and, like play yeah. their guitars, and to uh, some extent, I guess we do. But uh, there's, like I said, all those invoices and 1099s and marketing skills that go into it too. Yeah, and also you know there are um, there are moments that uh, like you deal with frustration, and uh, it's not always like you good no you probably you have a like you have a gig schedule and it's raining and you cannot perform uh, stuff yeah. like that you know or like something that goes bad like uh, uh one song uh, like you broke a string no like something like that you know yeah or there's or like uh somebody that flakes uh, like a show you know things happen no like so you gotta do yeah it. they happen all the time and yeah. you know even when they don't happen it's just like it can be so high and low like you can have one gig where there's like hundreds of people there and everyone's super attentive and super into it and then you can have other other ones where there's like three people in the gig and it's like discouraging to play for nobody but it's, at least you get to play for yourself it's still yeah. worth it yeah my even i mean if uh, so for performance even if there is just one other person like listening you do you play your your art out no because you yeah. for just one listener no or if there is nobody you still play your art out just for yourself no like yeah D you gotta do it no you gotta do it no matter what <laughs> like one or one thousand you know like the show always goes on yeah it goes on and uh, you do that you do your best that's uh that's you know like kind of the struggle of a performer but you know yeah but also, also the fun the, the fun of performance what are you gonna do? Just play, no? Like, actually, <laughs> you, wanna, you wanna do another song? Sure. You, um, you wanna change the ukulele, or this is fine for now? This is fine for now. Okay. I have, um, I mostly brought the second ukulele because Let It Burn is in that key, but I have okay. a new song in that key too. Where okay. We, we might get to those if we run out of songs on the album since there's almost only eight. So I have a couple, I have a couple new ones in new the bag. Ones. Uh, that's uh, that's what I was telling you. Because you know, like songs, like once you start writing, you keep writing and you write mm -hmm. more, no? And uh, yeah. And it's crazy because they they get better. Like the more that you're writing them, you know, like the yeah. more songs you're writing, like you you get better at it. So then your new yeah. songs are new songs are even better. Yeah. That's a, that's another struggle of being a musician. You spend all this time recording a CD and then you're like, damn it, this one didn't make it on there. Yeah. But uh, what can you do? I'm going to play Make the... another one. No? <laughs> yeah, make another it. album. Another album, you know, like work for it. Have another fun fundraiser. Whip it all out, you know? Yeah, you know. Um, I'm going to play the first song on the album um, called I Don't Own You. And I, I like to play this song next to Better By You because they're written about like the same situation. It's like a it's like a before and after. So it's a... I like pairing them together. Okay. Cassie Levi, BFF.FM, live. Nothing I will do 
I don't own you. Live BFF.fm, Cassie Levi. Yeah, we don't know. We don't know. We don't own anybody. anyone. Anybody, anybody. Anybody. You know, not even ourselves. Nope. A little bit, you know. <laughs> you know, you know. It's, uh, yeah. It's kind of like this... Uh, this Western mentality, we like collect thing, we own thing, we own people. Like it's, we should like think in a different way. Um, you perform solo, but also you perform with a band, no? Yes. You have a, a band. Is, okay. Depends on the venue. Depends on the occasion. Yes, um, it kind of varies from from gig to gig. But the bigger ones, I like to bring along my band, and it's. It's so great playing with a band and like having that support and like all that extra sound just filling out the music. It's amazing. So you got like bass guitar, bass, uh, bass guitar, drums. a drummer, and um, we've recently started working with. Um, I guess we got a we got a new bassist, and then our old bassist is playing like keys now. Okay. So that's been that's been a pretty fun transition too. Cool. Yeah. I mean, adding elements is always uh, adding elements like to, to your own uh, creation, no? Like mm -hmm. they they bring their own taste and their own, you know, feel. But mostly, you know, you good to go even like a solo performer, no? Yes, I yes. play by myself um, fairly often, much like I'm doing right now. Just throwback to old fashioned Cassie, just me and my ukulele, and um, I still enjoy that a lot too. Yeah, I mean, it's great. Yeah, it's great. I mean, it's it's good to to like less is more, no? Like especially like mm -hmm. like with like with touring and uh, organized like may like four five, four people. It's like it's already start for, like more than three. It's getting complicated, you know. Like, yeah, like scheduling and like finding accommodations for where you're gonna stay and like feeding everybody and even yeah. just transporting everyone is. Yeah. I haven't done a tour yet, but hopefully it's in my near the, future. That is near near future. Yeah, one thing at a time, you know. Yes. Yes, like uh, you like the new songs are coming as well. Like mm -hmm. you know, things uh, things uh, will come. Things will come. Yes. They take their time, but they make it. Yeah, you brought some uh, some music uh, with you. That was inspirational, no? I did. I brought um, um, a few different CDs, and then there's there's one person that I wanted to mention in terms of like inspiration, but I realized I didn't have her CD, so I'll just tell you about it. Okay. Um, uh, so I I brought a couple of CDs from like when I back in my days when I was listening to like a lot of singer songwriters just from YouTube. There is a couple specifically ukulele musicians who inspired me to start playing ukulele and so this okay. is one um okay. it's danielle eat the sandwich and then um the other one is named julia noons and she was i think like a really big influence in me playing the ukulele she's kind of what got me started and um i brought her i have her n most recent album on my itunes on my phone her newest cd is like really great um and then this is a uh, another small local She's she's local now. She's from New York, but I was a big fan of her back in my YouTube days. And now she lives in San Francisco, and her name is Lauren O'Connell. Um, and she just released this album, Details, in February as well. So I have a couple of these. You want to let's play one song of this? Sure. Let's one play. Of, yeah, you, you pick. You pick. Let's play the first track on Danielle's CD. Danielle ate the sandwich from yes. two bedroom apartment. Yes, it's the name of the, the track. Two bedroom apartment. Two bedroom apartment. Danielle eat the sandwich. There might be an airplane without a pilot and I have known some early birds who never got their worm and I'm feeling lonely as summer turns to autumn The wind is blowing things around And baby, you're not one of them The woman giving haircuts Well, she 
asks all kinds of questions and I know it's just formality but it all seems so rude because I am trying hard to fake a pleasant disposition but the truth is darling I'm feeling kind of blue and there's no I've been looking gawking at all the couples walking and either side of me feels so bare without you near it just tell me when the snow is falling I can be in your arms and we can be that couple at the ski lodge on the postcard because there's no good reason for me to be feel empty in all the late night markets and the trash that once belonged to someone now lays on the ground and I am in good company as all the shopping carts roll only bumping into cars just to feel that someone's there there's no good Puzzle boxes read frustrated thoughts and the refrigerator magnets spell out oh dear how I miss you and I am feeling lonely as summer turns to autumn the wind is blowing things around and baby you're not one of them so Uh, file under inspiration, Daniel ate the sandwich. Also, I see the CD as a uh, dedication to you, like sign. So, you know. Yes, I'm uh, very, very fangirly at times, and I do enjoy getting musicians to sign CDs for me. So, it's just a little bit of a guilty pleasure. Yeah, no, I mean, it's, there is nothing wrong with it, actually. <laughs> cool. Uh, yeah, I can see. I can see like why you pick this as an influence. You have some something else to to play right now. Um, yeah, I thought. Um, so the friends that played on my on my album, their band is called Bearcoon, and they're r really incredible. Um, so I brought their CD as well. Okay. And I think we should play the the last track. Okay. It's called Whiskey. I think it's my favorite one on this CD. Bearcoon. Bearcoon. Yeah, bear coon, like a mm. like a bear that got combined with like a raccoon. Raccoon, okay. <sighs> oh, sorry. Thank you, thank you. I'll keep track of the playlist. So last song. Whiskey. Whiskey. Bear coon. BFF the defend.
Berkun whiskey, another uh, influence for you, Cassie. Okay. Yes. So, um, uh, well, we were offline. We were asking you, like, how do you f feel about the music in the Bay Area? Huh? Mm -hmm. Like the scene. I feel like the Bay Area music scene is like really wonderful. I feel like there's just so many small, local, super talented, incredible musicians, um, and I love going out and um going to their shows and like collecting their cds and taking them home and hopefully like getting to talk to such awesome musicians and see like what makes makes them tick in terms of their songwriting skills i think there's just too many good musicians out here so you think it's uh, mostly uh it's a geographical reason or like a historical reason like i mean let me explain this like uh, historical by you know bay area always been uh, like uh, uh, avant-garde no like for mm -hmm. uh, like human rights civil rights you know very progressive place very open-minded so uh, this is uh, like a reason or like a geographical reason because it's the west and it's like the, the newest part no of the continent no like of the nation mm -hmm. what do you think is the why is the I think probably a little bit of both. I think like um, historically, uh, San Francisco's history plays a big role in that. I mean, I think San Francisco has always been a place that has drawn like just really eclectic and um, passionate people to it. And a lot of those people are really incredible artists. Um, and I think um, just the sheer number of people here like makes a big difference as well. And I'm sure there's a few other hot spots that probably have a lot of great music as well like LA and New York and Portland um, but New Orleans yeah New, or New Orleans that's a, yeah. a good one um, and uh, Nashville that's, Nashville it's, yeah it's a big one too um, but yeah I'm, I'm partial to San Francisco I've always lived in California and I just feel like it's such a it's such an accepting area for people who are kind of different and it's got these beautiful the beautiful coast and there's so much like good nature in the surrounding yeah. areas that i think that's probably inspirational for people but i think san francisco just draws a lot of the good ones in yeah and uh, and probably you know even yeah, the bay area itself uh, because now it's it's a huge uh, like you know metropolitan area like yeah now all the cool kids are moving to oakland so oakland's probably even more of a hot spot than san francisco yeah, probably, uh, I have to admit, like, you know, my also Oakland probably is, like, it's getting a very expensive, too, so, you know, people are, mm -hmm. are moving somewhere else, but, you know, like, let's talk about, like, the, the Bay Area in general, no? Definitely, it's, um, it's an inspiration. And, like you say, you, you collect, uh, like, local artists, like, music, like, CDs, uh, so, probably with autograph, all of those, no? <laughs> like, with... Many with of them are, the are signature. With signature, yes. <laughs> Now, it's a good way to, you know, like get to know what's going on around you and also a good way to support, you know, the artists, like buying the CDs at the show. No? Yeah, the support is really important to me because um, I know like how hard it is to make it. So it's like mm -hmm. I don't mind. I don't mind paying someone five to ten dollars for their CD because like that's an incredibly affordable price considering how much time and work and money it is to make the CD in the first place. Like, I, I love supporting musicians. And also, you know, it's good to like to give them feedback, you no, know, right away, you know. Mm -hmm. So after after a show, mm -hmm. it's a, it's a nice thing, you know. Like yeah. Somebody like so the music, the message is going through, you no. Know? Yeah, and to let them know like what's really working for you and like what you love about your mu their music and like kind of lets them know like you know, what they what people would like to see more of. Or you had like you a would. anecdote, like on any of your show, you had somebody that like actually at the end stop you, bought a CD and. Like, 
like where you in the doing like you do to other musicians somebody did to you like I definitely have um that's actually how I met we we talked about how um I was connected to you via Ella Harp who was on your show yeah. and that's um that's how I met Ella Harp ah, in okay. the first place and she's been like a great connection but a mutual friend brought her to one of my shows and so then she approached me afterwards and was like uh, okay so we started talking about music and I play a lot of shows together um, yeah let's give a shout to Ella Ella Harp yeah and uh, I think she was playing uh, with you for your regular release at the El Rio no a couple of months yes. ago Yes, she yeah. was. Um, and that ended up being a super fun show. I was really glad to have her. Cool. Cool. Yeah, support the local musician. And, uh, you know, it's great. It's a great thing, you know, like, because you get to know what's going on. And uh, you see, like, and, you know, you should, like, help each other. And uh, it's, you get, you make the community stronger, no? Mm -hmm. Cool. Cool. Um, Let's do another play, another song, record a song you want to play, perform another one. Um, what do you feel like? Let's, let's play one. Yes. I feel like I could play this one, but it has some really nice, it has a really nice bass line and some nice uh, drum, drum parts. So, okay. so you want to play off the CD? Yes. Let's okay. Do that. Let's play um, La Nina. La Nina, okay. From the Tides Rising album, Cassie Levi. It's the song number seven. And you're listening to Espresso Sesh Best Frequencies Forever every Tuesday from 2 to 4 p.m. La Nina, Cassie Levi. We got some uh, tropical uh, bossa nova vibes here. 
especially on the bass line, no? La Nina, yes. like you were saying, the, the bass player uh, on the album. This is the album, by the way, and uh, you can um, get it on the internet in any sh like digital shop, no? iTunes. Yes. Uh, iTunes, Spotify, Bandcamp. Um, you name it, it's there. Just uh, uh, Tides Rising, Cassie Levi with a Y. Yes, with a Y and no. It's not C A I S S I E. Don't let it tell you. Don't let it say, did you mean? Say no, I meant yeah. Cassie with just one eye. Yeah, that's uh, that's kind of a strange thing. Huh? Like, yeah, <laughs> uh, it's okay. It's uh, We are like uh, six billion people, seven billion people in this world. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a. Uh, I'm just th I'm just you know really thankful that there's an I after the A in her name because if it was the same exact the same as mine as it would be very confusing. I know we have, we have an homonymous like you know it's <laughs> uh, it, it happens but you know, especially like to doing like the same thing like yeah I mean sing, two singers but you're a songwriter and you you play also yes so yeah and yes. it's completely different territory so you know yes she does the Broadway. Yeah. I wish I did the Broadway, but yeah. maybe one day. Maybe one day. I'll be in a show with the other Cassie Levi. And okay, the two. The two, the two, <laughs> the Levi's. two Cassie Levi's. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but for now, we focus on this one. So, you know, I, as, you can, uh, as you can listen, uh, as, you, as you heard, like on the record, there are uh, different arrangements and um, different musicians. So, I, I put, so on the bass, uh, so Noe Cervantes, no? Yes, Noe Cervantes. And so he was really influential in the sound of that song. I mean, he was okay. talking about the comparisons between, um, you know, doing the bossa nova beat on the drum and it kind of sounding like water drops. And since that song is already about um, the, the storm, La Nina, which was an offshoot of El Nino. And I yeah. drove through it to visit some friends. So since it's about... A storm he was like it's gonna be really cool because like the title of the song is la nina which is already like you know kind of latin and you got like your your drum beats that sound like like water and it all just kind of like, comes together and like works really well and he had a lot of a lot of really good ideas for that one yeah this is a good thing of collaboration no i mean you find yes. somebody like we can uh, like um connect and like musically and uh, you know if I, there's new doors open no new doors open and uh you see, like, probably some sounds that you never thought about it, no, in your album. Exactly. That can fits exactly. very well, no? Yeah, because we all have those different influences, and then everyone brings them to the table, and it creates something yeah. that's so much better. Yeah. And, uh, okay. So, I think we play all all the song. No, there are a couple of, couple of uh, we haven't played I Hope to Be Alone. But, no, my, my point is... Uh, uh, I'm kind of excited to, to listen to the new songs. No? I was I was gonna ask if we yeah. could do yeah. a new song or two. Yeah. Um, I got a I got a couple in the pocket for you. Okay. Um. So let's see. I'll start with um. I'll play you a song that's new enough. I haven't named it yet. Okay. I've just been calling it Fancy Fingers because I do a little bit more fancy finger work than I normally do. So okay. if any listeners have an idea for what I should name this song, please uh, Go ahead. let me know and I'll, uh, I'll credit you in the next album. Okay. So for now, uh, Fancy Finger, Cassie <laughs> Levi, live, BFF.FM. Just playing here with 
This was um, an unreleased, uh, like a preview, fancy finger, Cassie Levi, fingers, Cassie uh, Levi. The once you stop, once you start, you don't stop, like writing songs. So you, you just can't go back, you know. That's good, no. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Uh, I mean, it's uh, like one, yeah. Otherwise, you know, like. Uh, make no sense it's good yeah it's good to and like you say like you think uh, i mean you feel like the new songs are better than the but it's not it's like a it's most like a mirror like it's a part of like it's a different uh, it's like a different stage of your life stage of your life exactly it it. i think it's yeah. like a really important part of my um i don't know my own just process of dealing with things in my life so i just kind of like write them as a way to express myself and feel what mm. I feel. And then when I'm feeling something else, it's like this, this feels better because this is what I feel now. Yeah, exactly. But still, remi uh, like the songs are like um, a moment, like you, you, mm -hmm. you put like, you, it's like a photograph of yourself, like in time. No? Mm -hmm. That's so true. And I mean, my album, my album is like a moment of my life. I, The cover is me when I had long hair and I used to wear it in hair buns and then I, I cut it all off and now I'm in a new moment. I think you look, you look great with the, the short hair. Yeah. Thank you. I really like it. Yeah, yeah. And, um, yeah. Because, you know, we are dynamic, like, person, like, you know, like, uh, beings, no? So, otherwise, you know, like, we'll be so kind of boring, you know, being the same yeah, so all stagnant. the time. Yeah, Very stagnant, you know, like kind of like it's not it's not even like lively thing, no, to stay the same, no? Yeah, you know, if we'd stay the same forever we'd be like rocks. Even rocks change. They get like worn down over time. I'm yeah, like, you know. Cool. All right, Casey Levi here BFF dot FM. Uh You want to play it with the other ukulele? Or this is fine. You know the um, <laughs> the last song that I played was the one I was supposed to play on the other ukulele, on the other, yeah. and then I, once I started, I was like, "Ugh, I can't go back now." I mean, it's uh, so. <laughs> it's okay. You can say with this one. Um, it's three twenty six. You want to keep with the uh, with performing? You have uh, some other songs. Um, I have. Uh, I have another song that I could play. Okay. One more in the pocket. Yes, please. Yes. Okay. Uh, it's a new one too. It's a new one. Okay. And I could I could theoretically play the other two that we haven't played off the album. They're both very like um, very like slow, kind of like downer songs. But I will mm. gladly play them for you. Okay. Um, <laughs> this this one though is a new song and it's very upbeat. Um, it's called Until You Love Me. It's about the idea that you could like play your ukulele so good that someone could fall in love with you spoiler alert it doesn't it doesn't work maybe if you're a better ukulele player than me i don't know but um this is until you love me until you love me cassie levi bff the defense I 
might not be your type I know you like A bit more confidence I don't think The better parts of me Can be seen beneath your lens So just close your eyes Hear the rhythm that beats inside Open your mind I may be what you like I think that we could reach a higher frequency Something makes me believe So I'm gonna play this ukulele Till you hear me Well I'm gonna write every night Till you care I'm gonna sing loudly With every inch of me I'm gonna play this ukulele Till you love me Maybe some candles burn slow Sparks can explode from Embers left below So let's ignite a fire here tonight Would you invite me to the light? If I just play this ukulele Will you hear me? I'm gonna write every night till you care I'm gonna sing loudly with every breath I breathe I'm gonna play this ukulele till you love me Yeah, I'm gonna play this ukulele You're going to play this ukulele until you love me. Yes. Until you love me. I'm never going to stop. Yes. And that's the way to do it. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. It's a song to my audience. Yeah. It's cool. This is an, it's a new song also. Yes. Yes. Um, so you're like a seed, putting the seeds for the next album. Yes. Already. Starting to, starting to craft. I'm feeling like it might be a little, a little folkier than the last than one. The, okay. Be nice. Yeah, I was thinking like, um, uh, you know, ukulele, I mean, it's also very like tra- uh, easy to transport, you know, like, yeah. you know, like, it, I mean, guitar is not that big, but, you know, u- ukulele, it's like. It's so small. So small, no. So it, it's a nice travel mate. And uh, and also, you know, even um, if you are like taking a stroll, like a hike, you know, mm-hmm. in the. In a park, you can bring your, your ukulele with no problem, no, and uh, you know, have it there, like, get inspired, and you know. Yeah, it's definitely super easy. This thing weighs like a pound max, and I think it's something that like um, I I've really grown to appreciate lately since like playing with other musicians. Like, my drummer has to make like four trips to set up her instrument, and it's just like, wow, yeah. I've been spoiled my musical career. I know, yeah. For singers, it's even easier. Like you know, they just bring themselves. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. T- so, another question. Um, mm-hmm. So, so th- how is the songwriting process? You st- you have a melody in, in mind. You have a story that you want to tell. You have like a, a like a, you know, like a motif in your head. Mm-hmm. How is the the process so far i think it um i think it kind of varies from song to song i'd say usually the way that i do it um is i i have um i like sit down and i pick some chords that i like or maybe i have an idea and i try to find chords that fit like into that feeling that i'm looking for and so i find some chords that i like first and the order that i like them and then um 
I write the melody, like I hum it out. And then once I have this, the melody, then I write the lyrics, which is like the longest part of the process for me. That last song that I played you was kind of, it kind of came out like ass backwards where like I heard the, the line, like, I'm going to play this ukulele till you love me. So I just like played it on my, played it on my ukulele until I figured out what the chords were. Um, but I'd say it usually starts chords to melody to lyrics, to lyrics okay. and then more fleshing out in terms of other arrangements what do you do like um um so you hum the melody you know like with the with the with the ukulele huh? yes my yeah. voice memos is full of that okay so you got voice and uh, you listen to the voice memo and then you like you you put the the lyrics right? no you've yeah you've i think lyrics. about it over like the next i mean sometimes it takes me like months to finish writing the lyrics to a song but i'll like hum it while i'm at work and i think about the melody until um more starts to starts coming um if i'm having if i'm feeling really stuck i'll get like really methodical with it and i'll sit down i'll do like flow charts okay. to try and get some ideas out and find some uh find some words to like finish what i want to say Especially uh, maybe if you have a deadline, no, like finish, uh, finishing a song for the album, for the recording, you know? Exactly, exactly. So I prefer to let it kind of come naturally and at its own pace, but sometimes as a professional, you gotta yeah, speed you gotta, it along. Yeah. And you know, mostly like your songs are like uh, uh, reflecting your life, uh, your, yes. your, your experience, your. Yes, I mostly, you know. um, I mostly just write about my, my own life and the things that. Um, matter to me that's been my process so far so far okay and do you feel like um like a sense of relief when you sing out this thing or i definitely do wait I, yeah, no, yeah so, <laughs> um i i was mentioning earlier that i feel like that's a really important part of like my own process dealing with life my own like self-reflective process is that i um i just it really helps me work through things to write it down and think about it. And um, a lot of songs end up going in the trash because I feel like they're like too bitter or too, um, too much of the wrong emotions go into them. And I find that like, even though some of them are like really good songs, sometimes it's hard to like pull those up every time. Whereas like um, the song, I don't own you. It's about like, you know moving on and letting go and it's something where even though i wrote it right after a breakup it like made me feel really good to play it so then after that i would i'd play it all the time because it just it just felt good and it like reminded me of like this is this is how you want to be feeling and this yeah. is where what you should be running with cool no because um, um can be a little challenging when you put yourself out there like this no Yes. <laughs> but yeah, but you know, if you find like it's, uh, it's if it's a relief and make you feel better, so it's it's a good thing, no? It is. It's really good. I mean, it's occasionally awkward when like you write a song about someone and then they're there while you're playing it, but uh -huh. it's just kind of part of it, you know. Yeah, I mean, it's uh I mean, you don't put names. I mean, who knows the story knows the story, but you know, like who doesn't you see this listen to a story you know no really dear john's story. from me yeah so yeah cool uh you want to play another song the la the last one uh i would like to i would like to close the show with one from the album no while, while we wrap the uh, wrap up but okay. if you have uh, like another one that you can play live mm -hmm. i'll play um i'll play to be alone Okay. Life. Um, okay. It's the recording. It ended up being much longer than I'd intended. So okay. it's we'll we'll close, I guess, with I hope, which is a little shorter. Okay. And uh, you want to introduce this song briefly? Um, the song "To Be Alone" is uh, probably one of the harder ones for me to play from the aforementioned like it's it's a okay. little sad so okay. um it brings up some of those feelings i think i originally thought i wrote it about someone else but it turned out to be just about me so okay. the song is called to be alone cassie levi live vff.fm
back here But I do it for you Dear Just wanna know I Just want to know why What you said I deserve Ooh, it's so Things can't stay this way So tell me, can you stand to do this on your own? Do Cassie Levine here BFF the FM nice moment uh, it was good also like a little second after you finish you know like pause. yeah a little pause and cool like intimate moment nice um, songs that are uh, no so somebody else can uh, feel exactly like you did when you wrote the song and can uh, how you say like imperson impersonate mm -hmm. your the song like theirs no so you know i don't know if you get what i'm saying i uh, do i think uh, one okay. of the most beautiful parts of like art and music is that like you put this thing out there and then someone somewhere like knows exactly how you feel and it's like this mm -hmm. connection even if that person has been dead for a long time it's like you can have this connection like over time and generation and whatever and understand that like 
in this crazy, confusing world, someone out there really gets it. Yeah. And this is like one uh, one thing that, that like for somebody who makes music is like priceless. No, it's it's, it's more like uh, than a gr- winning a Grammy. You know, it's like like hits like music hits you like Bob mm-hmm. Marley say you feel no pain. So you know, like really like go hit somebody like in a good way. You know, like with with your words, with your feeling, like share the feelings and you know. Definitely one of the best highlights of doing music. Yeah, aspect. yeah. So, you know, uh, you know, we're going to tell you, like, good luck. This is your first um, uh, album out, no? Yes. And it's like a pleasure for me to host you here and uh, l- let you play the, the songs with the, um, uh, with the hope that, like, in a year or two, Hopefully you can come back and present the next one, and uh, you know, like, because you know these things. Uh, I mean, it's a uh, it's a path, no? Yes. You know, hopefully we're gonna. Be, I'm gonna be uh, <laughs> around, uh, still doing the radio show. You still gonna play music and you oh, know. Oh, definitely. I will see you in a year. Yeah. No. I mean, with another with another record, you know, <laughs> and uh, you know. Because it's a it's a slow it's a it's like a like putting a seed no and then mm-hmm. waiting that yeah what's the best way to follow you and uh, stay updated with um, th- your release your shows um, you can find me on all the social medias most of them are just under Cassie Levi Music as one word I also okay. have um, a website with all those all my social medias on it if you want to find them. Um, and it's just CassieLevi.com, C-A-S-S-I-E-L-E-V-Y.com. Dot, dot com. And um, check the album T- Ties Rising. And uh, support artists, please, like, buy the, the album. Go to a show and... Uh, or even more, like, go to a show and buy the album at the show, no? From Cassie. I'll uh, definitely yeah. sign it. Yeah, you know. And share a feedback too, no? I'd love to hear it. Yeah, and uh, if you are in um, San Jose, the 15th? Yes, 15th at Tiny Fest. Tiny Fest. And you're going to play with the band there, huh? Yes, I'll be with the band. Um, the We won't have keyboards that day. It'll just be drums, bass, and me and ukulele. And then um, San Mateo Pride for all you LGBT people in alleys. Allies on uh, the 16th. On the 16th, okay. It's 11 to 5. We'll be on at 12.30. Cool. Thank you, Cassie, for being here. Let's uh, let's close the show with a song from the album. All right. And uh, best of luck uh, for everything. And, uh, I mean, luck is not for, uh, well, you know, it's, it's like a friend, like a saying, no? <laughs> you know, it's, uh, it's uh, like uh, keep doing it and, uh, you know, like, and be, and what can i tell you just keep keep doing what you're doing no thanks and, so much the, the extra and, luck definitely doesn't hurt yeah, either yeah extra luck doesn't hurt either yeah you, <laughs> but, but you know like also like uh fortune favors the bold no like they say so you know they gotta be bold to to do that to be to be like you also no cool uh tides rising cassie levi thank you so much for being here thanks for having me stay tuned on bff.fm because astral projection radio hour is coming at 4 p.m sharp and uh, let's close the show with um, uh, the song i hope i hope that's Uh, the last one that's the last one thank you for being here thank you for performing thank you uh check it out cassielevi.com Oh, and uh, Cassie Levi music all the social media let's listen to I hope thank you so much for listening see you next week espresso session bff.fm <laughs> <laughs>